Well, you know, it's um, I'm running out of clothes a little bit here on this trip. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, adventurous yesterday, to say the least. Okay, you're running out of clothes. Uh, what? How many? Cl- like, how much do you have to pack stuff when you go on these trips? Well, I mean, like, I haven't been home since Wednesday of last week because I went to uh, Montana. I did do some laundry at Montana, my girlfriend's house, but like. So I went home Wednesday of last week, and I really haven't been home. I think I've honestly been out in the Seattle area maybe like 25 days since the season started total. Like I just am not home. I'm, I'm, I'm living out of my vehicle and a suitcase all the time. And so um, I don't know. Yeah, I packed a lot. But so yesterday, um, as you saw on my tweet, I had some issues with my uh, – uh, with the rain, it looked, I didn't it pack looked, a raincoat. It looked I miserable. I didn't have a poncho, so I'm I'm leaving my hotel. It's raining, but it doesn't look like it's coming down that much. So it's like a three and a half block walk to the subway. So I'm getting there, and all of a sudden, the East Coast raindrops start to fall, <laughs> and I'm getting pounded. So I get to the subway, and I'm not too bad in the subway, but then when I get to Yankee Stadium it's pouring. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And like clubhouse is open. I see that Julio is batting sixth, So I'm trying to get him before, you know, make sure maybe I can talk to him before the game, all that other stuff. And so it looks like it's starting to let up. So I'm like, okay, it's letting up. I'll be okay. And I go to take off and it was just, and like the sky is even parted more. And, like, I was looking for an arc to go floating by. So I'm running down the concourse to, to get in the media gate. And at that point, like, the water is splashing up on my legs. My shoes are soaked. My jeans are soaked. My socks. Everything on me is soaked. My bag, you know, I'm worried about what's rain inside my backpack. So I get in there and, like, I go down to the clubhouse. They give me some towels. And then they just hand me a pair of, like, shorts and say, one of the guys gave me a pair of shorts and said, here, put these on. And they took my jeans, my socks, my coat and dried them in the dryer with some other people who had had the same thing. So it was like I, I, I did my interview of uh, with service in a pair of basketball shorts and no socks on in my shoes. <laughs> now, so. these are these the people that work with the Mariners or are these like they work with. Um, do they work with like the Yankees? No, it was Joe Van Vleck. Uh, one of the main clubbies, the clubhouse guys for the uh, Mariners. He's he's on the trip, so he's the one who did it for me. I mean, obviously the Yankee clubbies helped him, but yeah, he did it. There was like a, one of the analysts needed something dried too. Like a, I wasn't the only one who got caught out there. I was just probably got it the worst. And like yeah. so, like they they dry my socks and everything, but I go put my shoes back on. And my shoes are so soaked, my socks got wet again. Like I didn't get to change them until I got to the airport last night. Where I had a four-hour plane, a uh, four-hour flight delay, and I sat in the airport. For, for, I didn't. I was supposed to fly out at nine thirty. I we flew out at one thirty. Why well, you you need to detail this stuff? Can you just detail this stuff like on on like your social media, like on Instagram? I mean, you're no, a big because I'm Facebook. not like certain beat writers that I'm not like certain beat writers <laughs> that take pictures of themselves on planes and tell you how hard they work and how hard they're grinding and. How much they love their family, you know. Oh, like, just stop your. I love my family. I, I love my family. I don't necessarily like them all the time, you know. Okay. Like, you know, just like stop. I don't get out there and say like, oh, you know, life is. This is more important. Some things are more important than life. When I get beat on something for news, no, I'm I'm not like that. <laughs> what? That's been building up for a while, not just with me, but several other members. <laughs> God. All right. Uh, I don't know what you want me to do. You want me to say so? I can't say anything. I got to move on. I no, I know you can't. I can't say anything. But I, I'm always the one who says it, you know? Um, okay, so you see, when you see – I haven't even mentioned what you're brought to you by. Ryan Divish of the Seattle Times with the tank top on. He's going to go work out here. Shout out to the Grizz. Hey, yep. do, the Grizz, do the Grizz have a baseball team? No, they have a club team. They were going to bring it back, and it's some Title IX issues and stuff. Oh, Title IX. Well, Title IX is going to be a real big issue with what they decided yesterday. Oh, man. Of college athletics because these people in Title IX, are they going to be had their hand out going, well, where's our money? And these people are going to say, uh, you don't bring any in, so you're not getting anything. 
Yeah, I mean, like that's just empowered the the uh, schools to kind of play favorites to the sports that are revenue producers. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, okay. Ryan is brought to you by every Wednesday and Friday, uh, chalet bowl, Washington's oldest, uh, bowling alley established in 1941. Now, Reggie Frederick, who owns it, he did not start at 1941, but if you look at Reggie, you would think maybe that's the case. All right. <laughs> but it's in Tacoma's Proctor district. It's family owned and operated 40 years. Frederick family, the staff, they specialize in customer service. Uh, for bowling, food, and a fun experience at their unique 12-lane facility. Go to ChaletBowl.com to make your next uh, reservation. All right, so when you see and you hate this stuff on Twitter, and I get it because you don't want to have to answer for the decisions that are made by the organization. When you did see that he was hitting six, your reaction was? Uh, I wasn't really surprised. Scott kind of had hinted that there were going to be changes, and... Uh, I didn't necessarily know with Julio, but he had looked bad the first three games. You know, I think he he had the hat trick the night before. Uh, I think he was one for, you know, one for 12 on the trip or whatever. So he just hadn't looked good. So I was like, yeah, yeah, this could be happening. And uh, and it did. I mean, like I, I guess to me it was, you know, it doesn't really – like, is it going to fix him? Is it going to fix the Mariners offense? No, it's not. I mean, like – they, they moved him down, then they went out and got three hits in a game. It's 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 just – it's something for debate on Twitter, on sports talk radio, on podcasts. I mean, like, I don't – I don't necessarily believe in protection, like in lineup – like protection and other things, but not in life or in, like, um, lineup construction. I don't necessarily believe in the concept of protection that much. I mean, like, th- they're, they're not going to pitch – you know, like, with Julio, when he was batting – it, the, the process was simple. It's just like, if we execute pitches off the plate, he'll still swing. We'll get him out. We don't have to throw it down the middle, nor do we want to, to get him going. And he has missing pitches down the middle now because, and everybody's like, oh, it's because of this. Now. No, what's, what's happened is, is he's expanded the strike zone so much. His timing is all jacked up. He's, you know, susceptible to the inside fastball. So then what happens is, that's why he misses the ones down the middle. It's not because he can't hit, but it's like everything that they've done to him has put him in this position where he's not in a comfortable position to hit. And I'm going to get super granular and like nerdy about hitting position and stuff. And I have all these amateur hitting coaches uh, and experts, t- you know, emailing me and texting me. Um, and like, and, and I'm, I'm one of them in a lot of ways, although I don't, you know, tell anybody oh he should do this or do that i wait and talk to people but like it's pretty simple like when when he goes to fire on his swing he's not in a good position he's usually off balance Mm -hmm. and and that's because of timing it's because of struggles all these other things is set up and he hasn't been able to find any consistency for that as one scout said he doesn't look athletic in the batter's box which is amazing because he's the most athletic. Yeah, guy. I mean, he looks. He, he, okay, you coach this stuff. You've been around it. You played at the college level. Okay, now all things that you can't you can't say about me. And by the way, great arms. By the way, is it arm day today? What do we do for the arms? Are we? Uh, I don't ever lift arms. Really, <laughs> I don't really like. Everybody thinks like I lift heavy. I don't. Uh, I don't lift that heavy. You look great. I use a lot of bands. The okay. pink weights. Pink Mostly, weight. it's like shoulder rehab because my shoulder's so jacked up and knee rehab okay um you know that the, the right knee was a little sore after my I, getting lost in I, Central I, Park I, I bet it Adventures. was so, so he, he just seems to, to me just like amateur guy watching watching it that he is so wound up he looks like a ball of uh, rubber bands that he just looks so tense up there rather than like free and relaxed and I, I can't I, I, get into like the like does his setup look different? I know that's been discussed. I mean, he he's, he talked about it himself, right? How he's he has changed his his setup and his swing. We we've brought this up before, and I still do. I love that little arm flap thing he used to do. Yeah, I thought it was a. I think a lot. I think golfers and base and and baseball and hitters are very similar. That they should have a uh, which they call a trigger, right? What's the what's the trigger to get you going? Like Jack Nicholas, right? He he did a forward he press. Did he did the head move, right? He, he where he cocked his head. The trigger to get you going to swing. And does he 
it seems like he's gotten rid of that. But I don't know. He just looks so tense up there rather than relaxed in an athletic position like you just know. Yeah, I mean, he, he tries to. It's it's weird, though. He kind of wobbles the bat a little bit. It, sometimes it's moving forward, then it's got to go back around. Like, you know, and then they've talked about it with his legs. You kind of load your legs. You know, like there's some great video of Juan Soto and how he hits, how he kind of his butt and his back leg kind of load back but his head and his hands don't move, and then he just explodes mm-hmm. forward. Well, what we see with Julio sometimes is he kind of sits down. Rather than and low. Then, and when he sits down and then the bat goes forward, and then it just doesn't, you know, and part of it is it's not, it's not that that's a bad move, but he doesn't necessarily start it early enough so that when he's, like, trying to get to that spot where, you know, they always talk about, like, it's a slingshot. You have to go load it back to get forward yeah. like when he goes to load back he's not ready to go forward when the pitch is you know getting to him it's late and that's why he fouls it off so we see, like scott service said he would rather have him get out be early if you're early you can still adjust but it's better to be early than late because if you're late you don't see it as well you don't you know you're going to miss the strikes and you can't really adjust because you're behind it. So, so is it a thing for him? Like when you watch him, like you, you see it at the youth level all the time. There, there's some kids that over exaggerate that load. I mean, before the mm-hmm. the pitcher has the ball, they're you know they're they're back on that right foot, ready to go, and yeah, and all that. And I and I get it. And is he waiting too long to load on that back foot? Like when that That's pitcher's kind of, starting to deliver, is that kind of what you're what you are getting at? And what service is getting at? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, like it's 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 late. The load is late. He's getting into the hitting position late. You know, it's like Justin Turner. Justin Turner picks that leg up before, as the, like the pitcher's knee goes up, right? And he just kind of rides his ass out and hits. Now, that's not what Julio does, but like he, he's got to find a happy medium of where that is. Um, you know, you, you just hope it's not like what happened to Dustin Ackley, where he made those crazy swing changes. Then he tried to go back to his old swing and couldn't find it. Couldn't do it. You no, know, Julio's trying to get back to where he is. But the big thing is, is, like, when you're doing that during games and you're expected to produce and you're getting all these situations, it's just hard to refine yourself a little bit. So, But, but he's hitting like, – but, Ryan, he's hitting the ball. But oh, yeah. He's hitting, but he's hitting infield singles. So what, what – yeah. is is that more – is that loading? Is that hands? Is that waiting well, too it's, late? It's, I mean, he is hitting a lot to the left side, so that's going to say that he's that he's going to be early on it rather than late. So what, what – But, like, the part of it is they call it catching it out front. Like, right. he's hitting it in a spot, but, like, where the bat position is relative to the ball, relative to the plate, he's not catching it in a way to generate backspin to get it in the air. The launch angle, because he's not – yeah, it's pulled, but it's almost like he's coming around the ball, so he's yeah. catching the top part of the ball, driving it into the ground. Right. It's still hard because he's so freaking strong, and his swing speed is that good that he does that, but, you know – you can make a lot of plays and I, I, to me so how does funny, he catch it though how does he how does he catch it underneath the ball in order to create that back well spot? like that's part of being in a position where your legs are in a good position and then that allows everything else to work forward like you know you coach i coach every big league manager every college coach i ever had every person that baseball is played from the ground up and if you're shitty with your feet yeah. and you're not in a good position with your feet, then nothing else is going to be good. And I think that's kind of where they're at with it. And so, like... It's very similar yeah. to golf, right? I mean, look look yeah. at the transition in golf in the last decade, right? The, 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 the using the feet so much to push up on the ball, right? To push yeah. up from the ground, to use the ground as the well, force that's, that that's drives... that's how you... People think that, like, your swing speed is from your from your arms. No, it's from your, your butt, it's from your ass and your core. Yeah. It's like why... Like, like Griffey, well, besides being a freak athlete... I mean, Griffey, you could put two crown and, ro- crown and waters on his ass and they wouldn't move because he had a big baseball player. But he's joke about Dustin Ackley. Like, Dustin Ackley won't be good. He doesn't have an ass, you know? Like, but you have that big kind of that lower core, as my buddy used to call it, the solid base of athleticism is big butt. And you, that's how you drive the baseball. And so Julio is strong as hell. He's just not being able to use his strength in a way to, do, to, to really generate power and mm-hmm. hit it and what's weird about this is it's funny if he just focuses really on driving the ball to dead center as hard as he can he'll get on time better 
to pull it in the air. That's really weird to say, but it, it's just so no. simple. It's like if you're on yeah. time to center that the pitch, that means you're seeing the pitch well enough to hit it to center hard, yeah. that you'll hammer the one that's on the inner half. I just read pull. a great article on, on a guy that was teaching hitting, and, and and you talk about, we talk about the, the, the physical elements of the swing in baseball, and you've talked about the feet and all that and the legs. And this guy's message was – and it made a lot of sense to me. He's like, you know, baseball, like anything, is just so mental. And that what he, one of his teaching lessons to uh, his players was just go up there every time, and the only thing that you're mentally trying to do is hit a line drive. Yep. All I want you to do is think about how do I hit a line drive past second base. And he said the more you think about it, because, you know, Players get up there. They listen to a bunch of different things like, oh, I got to I got to hit it here. Don't strike out. Don't do this. But if your single thought is just hit a line drive, line drive, line drive to your point. I know I'm simplifying it a lot, but to your point, if you think line drive, hit it up the middle, then eventually guys like Julio with that strength, they catch it. And that line drive turns into a home run. Well, it's kind of like Nelson Cruz always used to say home runs happen. You don't try from they happen. If they're a product of hitting the ball hard. Yeah. If you go up there and try and hit the ball as hard as you can up the middle, then they happen because you're in a good spot to hit. So, I mean, like, I'm sure it, it's not like it's not anything that these guys haven't said. Yeah. And that's like the, the nonsense of, of firing the hitting coach on all this. You can tell these guys all you want. You can drill them. You can do everything. If they can't, if they don't do it when they get in the box, if they lose their mind, you know, it's like me, I'm. I'm freaking Freddie Couples in terms of tempo and swing and smoothness on the range. Yeah. You put me on the tee at McCormick Woods, and I'm hooking that far. I'm hooking that thing so far left because I just get in my head. Yeah. I get quick. You know, it's like I can't slow it down, and that's what Julio's problem is. He's having a hard time, like, finding that spot in his head the comfort level where he just goes up and hits because all this other stuff is in his mind because I it's got to produce. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. I do that because it's a lot like just bring it back to golf. Cause again, I just, you know, it, I just think the approach to hitting a golf ball and hitting a baseball just to me are so similar. Right? And you go back to not just the physical nature of it. I'm just think there's a lot of the mental aspects to it, but you, as you mentioned, go back to like the driving range thing. You can go hit a bucket of balls and you're strike and great. And you're hitting it great because you know, there's another ball coming. You know what I mean? There's another ball that I can pick up. Okay, I hit that one left. Oh, I shanked that one. I, I, There's a worm burner there. But I got another ball, and then I hit that one great. When you go to the course, you got one ball. You got one swing, one hit. And so then you you build up all that pressure like you talked about going to McCormick Woods. Shout out, great golf course. I mean, it's very woodsy there, hence no, McCormick know. Woods. Um, home course. Well, I love the home course, too. Shout, I mean, the home course I'm is away. great. Home course, Gold Mountain. Well, home course, you can just, yeah, you can beat that ball anywhere. And you're, you're fine. You can find it. But it's, you know, when the pressure is when you play is that you only have one swing. And so for Julio, he knows, I got three or four at-bats here. What is that? You know, times, you know, five. 16 pitches usually. Yeah, 16 pitches. That's all I have. I think with and, that comes a lot of pressure to deliver on one of those 16. And then, and. The thing is, is like they're doing everything possible to make it difficult for you <laughs> to feel right. right. You know, and that's the thing is like he like so, you know, I think there was one he fouled one back and it was a 2 0 fastball it was down the middle. He fouled it back. He knows he's not getting that again. Yeah. You know, that was his one chance. You blew it. You know, it's like there ain't no mulligans, no breakfast balls. He's got to, And so it's it's that's where he's at. I mean, like it's I mean, we can beat it to death. But the, at some point, it just comes down to finding a way to hit the ball hard. And, like, I, everybody talks about up in the air. No, I'm just like, yeah, up in the air, don't hit a ground ball. Hit it hard up the middle. Yeah. Hit it hard up the middle to left center, right center. Good things will happen. The home runs will happen if he's doing that. That's what he did his rookie year. That's what he did when he got hot. It wasn't just full side homers. I mean, he has a gift to hit the ball to the opposite field very hard. But right now, he's not even putting his body in a position to do that because everything's kind of pulling off. He's getting around the ball, as they call it. God, I sound like just – I sound like an Amansky hitting video But right this now. is great. We're, this is going to be your new gig in the off season. We're going to record videos of you just I, doing I have, instruction. Do you already have I that? have a montage of uh, yeah. my girlfriend's son, Tyson, hitting me in the cage. Yeah. I cracked my forearm a couple years you're, ago. You're going to be the new it. personal hitting instructor for the vampire. 
That's what you're going to be. I mean, like, but that's the thing is, like, everybody sits there and says, oh, it's the hitting coach. No, the hitting coach can only do so much. You work the drills. You do what, you know, you try and provide input. Yeah. These guys have their own personal guys. But, like, you, you try and do everything you can to put them in a good spot. Which mentally, is a problem. Physically. Which is a and problem then, in a, of its own. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. The, the team hitting coach and the personal hitting coach. I mean, and the thing is, though, is most of these guys talk with the other guys. Like, okay. Yeah, like Hanniger, you know, Hanniger does the – he, he does the Robert Van Sayak, like Kelnick and those guys. You know, Hugh Quattlebaum is one of those guys. Tim Laker's one of those guys. Hey, used to be with the Mariners. So they have a good relationship. You know, they can call and say, hey, this is what we got. You know, Julio's guy is different. I don't really know him. I've met him once. Um, Ty France and JP is the driveline guys. You know, they all have their different guys. But they do talk and they coordinate, you know. It's like, because I'm sort of like what – Julio say, well, my guy's saying this, and DeHart probably say, okay, well, we see this, right? You know, as he's seen this, you know, it's like you just keep talking about it. But at the end of the day, if you if you can't go out there, clearly your mind and, and be athletic, because it's like the 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 one video of Tony Gwynn um, doing his hitting advice. It's the best it's one like, ever. Yeah, it's three things: get in an athletic position, be in an athletic position, uh, be balanced, and get a good pitch to hit. Well, I remember Ty or is it just no, I always it's, I always just do be balanced uh be yeah. ba- I, we always just do, do it too be balanced and then n- knob to the ball yeah. and I, I when I watch that video I'm always like wait a minute that's it that's that's yeah. all <laughs> yeah Ty France was like uh Ty France was like he goes when I went to San Diego State I thought I was gonna get all this stuff and he t- said that and then he goes but like the more he kept drilling it and you do stuff then he, he understood why it made yeah. sense because if you just simplify it a little bit, yes. you know, it's like that movie uh, Better Off Dead when Lane Meyer is going to go ski the K2. <laughs> go this way really fast. By the if way, something gets in your way, turn. One of the greatest movies of all time. Charles DeMar. God. Do you know the street value of this mountain? Just one of the, I mean, the best part is when he snorts. I might have to go when watch he, it. When he snorts Paramount. the snow. Yeah. Do you know the street value of this mountain? <laughs> It's pure snow. Two dollars. I want <laughs> my two dollars. What's the other? Okay, now that we're on this topic, and I'm with you. Hold on, I'm writing this down. I'm gonna watch Better Off Dead this weekend. I forget how good that is. What's the one movie with Cusack? Same genre, but they're oh, they're they're, they're, they're one crazy one summer. One crazy summer. There, thank yeah, you. Yeah, where they do the boat race yeah. and she has Teddy, the ugly dog. Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a that's a real hot Demi Moore. Yeah, the grandma cha- the grandma charges when they have that when she takes a check. One crazy summer. Kids, if you haven't seen Better Off Dead in One Crazy Summer, go watch it. I mean, oh my god, the uh what's the um the guy the Asian guy that in, in Better Off Dead that does um Oh yeah Howard Cosell. Oh shit. Yeah, truly Lane Meyer, a once great champion. And then the oh, mom, god. the neighbor, Ricky's mom. Oh yeah, Ricky's mom, yeah. Christmas. Can you say Christmas? Because <laughs> sneaky hot French gal in that. Yeah. And yeah. She, never to be found again, right? Never in any other I movies? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's like oh, uh, Cynthia Gibb in uh, Youngblood. Oh, yeah. Youngblood. Good call. She's pretty hot. Never. Sorry again. God, we could just go on movies. Like, like that okay. is those. God, those are just two classics. Cla- One Crazy Summer and, and uh, Better Off Dead. God, so good. Who did those? That was a Hugh. That wasn't a John Hughes. No, I don't think it, so. But whoever no. did it was like the same person. I felt yeah. like it's like summer rental. He's flying his pants, Al. He's flying. His pants. I suppose. Oh, your it's your table, but this is your lobster. Let me guess. Is this your belt? You <laughs> summer renters, you guys come down here every summer. Then can you run the place? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so good hey you mind coming over and taking a look at these remember when she gets the breast <laughs> <laughs> she gets the well he's a judge i value his opinion <laughs> no was he judge oh yeah that's right but what was candy what was he a uh, air traffic controller right yeah that's what he was yeah, yeah. um all right we've got it we got on a tangent there yeah a lot of julio good stuff on julio man i i just it is amazing i think we talked about this on wednesday show they are three games over 500 and they are in first place by three games and he hasn't done anything, like nothing. It's 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 truly remarkable where they're at. A lot of it has to do with the division. I get it, mm-hmm. and where they're at. But my, yeah, I mean, but you only play like the games you play. Right. I, I do think, like, and I think that the 
Um, uh, the div- the division will get better. Houston's playing better already. I think the uh, um, uh, the Rangers will get a little bit better too. Yeah. Um, so no, it, it's it's just like in the Mariners, like right now. I know Adam mentioned that they have the easiest schedule based on if you look at Tankathon, but that that can change too. But no, the Mariners are in a tough stretch of games. You know, the Yankees are second best record, I think, in all of baseball, best record in the American League. I mean, they. You know, they, the Orioles are great, obviously. You're just trying to withstand. So much of it is timing, too, when you play these teams, whether they're good or not. So just go out yeah, and play. Yeah. Like, you know, win some games and, and just kind of play. I, I think, you know, sitting here, like we wrote that story about whether they're 50 games. It's like, I don't know that it's defining of who they are or who they aren't. Do I think that they need to add stuff? Yeah. But, I mean, like, what they really need to do, like, they can go out and add a bat. But if Julio doesn't get rolling – and either one of the Mitches or Polanco gets rolling, it's not going to matter because they're not – they need more than what they – they need guys that they have to contribute, you know, guys that are expected to contribute, or they, it's not going to matter if they go out. And yeah. No, oh, you're right. He, he's just asked. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in a weird way, and I could hear – I could actually hear DePoto saying this. Okay, you wait for it. And, oh, yeah, the trade. Okay, when they yeah, don't trade don't. for someone – they're going to say, well, and Julio starts to turn it around. They're going to say. You feel like we're trading for Julio? Yeah, we've, we've made a trade, it's, and we've got Julio back, and he's now starting to hit better. So we yeah. feel like we've acquired a player, and it's Julio Rodriguez. You, you, mark, you mark it. If, if that happens and he starts playing better on the deadline, they don't make a move, but he's turning it on, they'll say something just like that. You know him. He will. <laughs> He'll spin it that way. It'll be great. It'll oh, yeah. be great to watch and great to listen. All right, we'll cut you loose. Yeah, go get a good workout in. Uh, what what is it today? Just kind of uh, stare at some uh, yoga pants ass day, or what? What do we got? Oh, I don't even know. Like the gym here is like connected to these one of these fancy condo places here. Fancy condo Maybe, means uh, young women. Yeah, I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> well, I always I'm forget go the gym relationship. I'm sorry. No, it isn't that. I'm just going to go in there and try and not look like I'm going to okay. die all the time. Well, so don't crazy. go dying on us, okay? Yeah. Okay. No, You're I the best. Ryan Divish, every Wednesday right, and Friday, brought you. to you by Chalet Bowl. Visit ChaletBowl.com. We appreciate it. All of it, all the content uh, with Ryan Divish up here at PuckSports.com.